Hey guys, Zot here, and welcome to another video. In 8.3, we saw the release of the Corruption system. Corruption is a new system that has taken the place of Titan Forging and War Forging, and applies to all relevant content. Corrupted items have a bonus positive affix attached to them, but come at the cost of giving you corruption, a resource that gives you more and more negative effects the higher amount of it you have. In this video, we're going to be exploring this mechanic and going through the negative effects. First, let's kick this off by exploring what corruption actually is. Well, as I mentioned, instead of an item titan forging, it will now become corrupted instead. This causes the items to gain beneficial effects which come at the cost of a set amount of corruption, with the majority of corruptions having three tiers, each gaining more benefits at a higher cost of corruption meaning you can only wear a limited amount of these items until the drawback is going to be too high. So now we've got a better idea of what corruption is, let's explore some of the potential corrupted affixes. Our first corruption is passive stat affixes. Now these all have three tiers, tier one giving 10 corruption, tier two giving 15, and tier three giving 20 corruption. Now there is eight different potential roles of this kind of corruption. Avoidance, haste, mastery, critical strike, versatility, leech, crit damage and healing, and lastly cooldown reduction. So let's take the haste one as an example. Tier one of this corruption will increase all haste you gain from all sources by 6%, 9% at tier two, and then tier three gives 12%. And this follows suit to all of these passive stat affixes. The more corruption, the more passive stat gain. Now, not only is there passive stat affix gains, there are proc stats as well. Now again, these follow three tiers. Tier one gives 15 corruption, tier two gives 20 corruption, and tier three, 35 corruption. The proc stat affixes can come in any of the four major stats. So haste, crit, versatility, and mastery, with the amount of stat gained varying depending on which proc you are using. But again, let's take haste as an example. Tier one will give you 546 haste for four seconds. Tier two, 728, and tier three, 1,275 haste for four seconds. Okay, so moving on, now we get into the good stuff. Damage proc affixes. Some of these are extremely strong when it comes to PvP, but we'll have a separate video on that coming out shortly. Echo in Void is our first damage proc affix. This causes your damages and abilities to build up a stacking buff with each cast you do, having a chance to then release the charges, dealing percent health to all targets around you in a 15 yard radius every one second until no stacks remain. Echo in Void costs 25 corruption at its lowest, 35 for tier 2, and 60 corruption for tier 3. The higher rank you get of Echo in Void, the higher percent health it deals to all targets, with tier 1 being 0.8%, tier 2 being 1.2%, and tier 3 being 2%. It's also worth noting that Echo in Void's damage is split between all targets that it hits. Our next corruption affix is Infinite Stars. Infinite Stars causes your spells and abilities to have a chance to strike enemies. Once hit, any subsequent procs deal 25% additional damage, stacking up to 10 times. The lowest tier of infinite stars is 20 corruption, with 50 being tier 2 and 75 being tier 3. So infinite stars is going to cause you to become very corrupted if you're using high ranked pieces. The higher tier of infinite stars you have, the more damage it deals. Now, this damage proc scales with item level, so wearing low level item pieces with it is just not worth it, whereas Echo in Void on the other hand scales from your percent health, so you could potentially be wearing a blue item and it would do the same as a max level piece. Twilight Devastation causes a giant beam to spawn on your location and then come out of you in a zigzag for 25 yards in front of you. This corruption again deals damage based on your maximum health, with tier 1 being 25 corruption, tier 2 being 50 corruption, and tier 3 being 75. The damage ranges from 6% of your maximum health on tier 1 to a huge 18% on tier 3. Similar to Echo in Void, Twilight's Devastation's damage is based on your maximum health, and not the item level of the piece. So a tier 3 Twilight Devastation on let's say, 
a level 420 ring is going to be the same amount of damage as a mythic raiding piece with the same amount of corruption. Twisted Appendage causes your damage in spells and abilities to have a chance to spawn a tentacle dealing shadow damage to your target for 10 seconds. The corruption values on this affix are 15 at tier 1, 35 at tier 2 and 66 at tier 3, with each tier simply just increasing the damage that the tentacle deals. Bear in mind with this corruption it's a gain based on the item level, so the higher the level the item, the more damage it's going to deal. Gushing Wounds on the other hand is a little different to the rest, due to it only having one tier. Gushing Wounds simply causes your spells and abilities to proc a physical damage over time effect onto your enemies, dealing very good damage over 7 seconds. There is as mentioned only one tier, giving 15 corruption. This corruption however scales from item level. And our last corruption effect is not a damage prog, but it's still unique. Void Ritual gives you secondary stats which stack every second for 20 seconds, and if more allies have it, the higher chance it will have to proc. Each tier increases both corruption gain, but also the amount of secondary stats Void Ritual gives you, ranging from 15 corruption and giving 7 stats, to tier 3 having 66 corruption and 32 secondary stats. On top of damage and stat affixes, there are unique corrupted weapons coming from the new raid Nyalofa the Waken City. These corruption effects are unique to these particular weapons, and are all guaranteed, so if you get the weapon it's going to have the corruption. The level of these corruptions is the same on all difficulty. Ok then, so now that we know the benefits of corruption, let's talk about the downside. As I mentioned in the intro section, corruption comes with some side effects. Each point of corruption you gain causes you to suffer bigger and bigger side effects. To see your corruption you can open up your character sheet and mouse over the eye like so. You can see how much corruption you have, how much resistance, which we're getting to later, and the negative corruption effects that you're currently suffering. When you have one or more corruption you suffer from grasping tendrils. This is a slow that has a chance to proc when you take damage. The more corruption, the stronger the slow is going to be, starting at a 10% slow on one corruption. Then, for every point of corruption you gain, the slow increases by 1%. So, if you have 40 corruption, this will be a 50% slow. If you reach 20 corruption, you not only keep the Grasping Tendrils debuff, but will also gain Eye of Corruption. This has a chance of proccing when you use spells or abilities, and spawns a zone around you, inflicting damage, stacking for every time you get hit. The more corruption you gain, the bigger the eye radius circle is going to get, and also the higher the damage whilst inside is going to be. Moving up the scale, if you get to 40 and above corruption, you get the Grand Delusions. This has a chance when taking damage to spawn a thing from beyond, which will chase you for 8 seconds and then deal damage once it hits you. As well as keeping all of the previous effects, Grand Illusion gets faster and deals more damage the higher corruption you go over 40. Our next corruption threshold is at 60, and is called Cascading Disaster. Basically, what happens here is that if you are hit by your thing from beyond, you will then in turn proc the previous two corruption side effects guaranteed. So you'll proc both an Eye of Corruption and Grasping Tendrils, meaning you'll be a minimum of 70% slowed inside of a giant Eye of Corruption. And our last side effect is Inevitable Doom. When you have more than 80 corruption, you gain a damage increase and a healing taken reduction active permanently, as well as again all the other active side effects still being active and scaled up. The damage taken and healing reduction starts at 5% and then goes up for every point of corruption you gain. These effects greatly limit the amount of corruption you can wear, especially in PvP scenarios. But there are ways to counteract corruption. You can gain resistances to bolster the amount of corruption that you can withstand. The main way to gain resistance is from your legendary cloak, the Shroud of Resolve. As you upgrade your legendary cloak you gain more resistance to corruption, starting at 5 and going all the way up to 50, meaning as time goes on you can wear more and more corrupted gear. On top of this passive resistance to corruption, once you reach level 6 with your cloak, you are able to then use your cloak every 3 minutes, and doing so will dispel any effects from corruption that you are currently suffering, as well as in turn making you immune to further corruption effects for another 6 seconds. Furthermore, there is another way to gain resistance, and that's from equipping any of the new essences added with patch 8.3 as either a major or minor essence. 
This is however unique, so you'll only gain the 10 resistance from one of these at a time. Alright then guys, that's going to be it for this 8.3 overview on the newly added corruption system. Be sure to like and subscribe and leave any questions you still may have in the comments below. And be on the lookout for our best corruptions in PvP video coming out shortly.